Uh, good morning everybody, uh, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of this globe. And welcome back to DADM 3, which is uh, the data analysis and decision making 3 uh, NPTEL MOOC lecture series. And as you know this total course duration is for 12 weeks, which is 30 contact hours, which when broken down into number of classes would be 60, considering that each lecture is for half an hour. And each week we have 5 lectures, after that you have an assignment. So, you have already completed assignment 1 and the, today's second week's last class which is the 10th lecture for the whole series. So, after this you will be undertaking the assignment number 2. And in all totality you will have as you can understand there would be 12 uh, assignments and then one final examination. So, if you remember we are discussing about utility and I will come back to the concepts of utility later on when when we consider the stochastic programming and all these concepts in details. Now, for the safety first principle which we are discussing, so safety first principle had three criteria. One was basically um, trying to find, so there were two issues. One was what is RP and RP bar, RP bar is basically the average value and P is basically the overall conglomerate decision which you want to make. How that is going to be formulated, I will come to that later on, just, uh, just be patient, it will be coming up later on. And uh, for the other two ones are basically related to RL, RL is some minimum uh, bound for your decision, not the decision variables for the decision you want to take. And it can be changed to RF which is the risk free interest rate as per the concept of, of uh, finance. So, say for example, you are trying to solve some problem in mechanical engineering, the problem would be definitely trying to maintain uh, the ductility of the material or maintain the strength of the material or the flow of heat, whatever it is or insulation capability or the height of, uh, of a cooling tower in, 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 um, in a thermal plant. So, all these things can be done. So, I am giving you very simple examples. So, when you are considering uh, uh, maximization of RP bar, what you are trying to do is that you are trying to shift the average value of the distribution more on to the right. So, the distribution by itself will move such that what you want to do is that as the average value moves, it can be, it may be possible that you keep the value or the probability of the overall area for RP, now RP is a random variable, for RP being less than RL is bounded by some alpha value. So, that is the level of reliability or level of confidence you want to put. So, here alpha is the predetermined depending on the investor's own choice and own constraints or the experiment what he or she is doing. Thus, if we consider the very simple case of normal distribution, so it can be easily broken up into the case. So, let me make one blank slide and explain it to you. So, it will be easier for you to appreciate. So, so now this is where we would like to, this I will keep it in order to explain that how we this was derived. Okay. Now, what we have is if you are considering the probability fact, it will be probability of R p bar let me check, so, so because there can be two ways how you, so this is probability of R p is less than R l alpha value. Okay. So, probability R p less than equal to R l is equal to alpha. So, let me draw the diagram also. So, consider this is a normal distribution, this is the mean value, this is R p bar and this is the distribution of R p. Now, coming back to here, so considering the normal distribution, so it is probability 
आर पी माइनस आर पी बार बाई सिग्मा पी लेस देन इक्वल टू आर एल माइनस आर पी बार बाय सिग्मा पी इक्वल टू अल्फा सो कंसीडर दिस वैल्यू ऑफ आर एल हियर सो लेट मी पुट आर एल आई एम यूजिंग डिफरेंट कलर्स इन ऑर्डर टू डिफरेंशिएट एंड द एरिया व्हिच वी वांट टू so this is the area alpha value so so technically so this is the alpha value which i am talking about now what it leads to so this is is z capital z and this is small z so you have probability of capital z less than equal to small z is equal to alpha so this fundamental concept which we are utilizing this one we are utilizing the concept again using different colors so this is basically x minus mu by sigma x mu suffix x these are suffix x is basically the standard normal divide z you just do simple replacement of the variables so once so now see here in z case z is known is rl is known rp bar is known sigma is known you find it out so capital z find find out the value of alpha also given from that you find out capital z and in the capital z you find out the value such that you can find out the the distributions and its mean and whatever is not given you can find out from this one equation now if i expand it so obviously this becomes small z so if this becomes small z so you you utilize this formula so i'm going to use the color same so that is r p i'm just utilizing the inside part r p minus r p bar by sigma p is less than equal to small z so this will be r l r l sorry this is r l okay this value so this is equal to capital z and the right hand side other part so this is and this part R L minus R P bar by sigma P is equal to so obviously if this is greater than so you will definitely have the constant. I'll put the equal sign first. So small z so it will be R L plus because if you take R P bar onto the right hand side so it will be this. now see here so if this minimum value has to be alpha and obviously the less than sign greater than sign will come accordingly so the equations based on which i will have this is what is coming out from here i'll just highlight it because rather it's getting a little bit cluttered so i'll highlight it using one color so this is the equation we were talking about this greater than sign would basically come from the fact that the value of alpha is, this one is less than or greater than um, so capital z for so whether capital z is less than or equal to small z or greater than or equal to small z so that will depend on which side of the distribution you are looking at now this is important to note we have considered that i have explained that in dadm1 so this left hand side right hand side would depend on two things so if you have done hypothesis testing it will mean that whether you are taking the uh, left tail or the right tail considering the the hypothesis testing problem how you are going to formulate so in that case it can be done for the case of normal distribution when you are using the optimization case it can be done as greater than or less than now 
if you further extend it, so consider R L is fixed. So, you want to basically ex keep increasing the value. So, in the case the blue frontier would be the efficient frontier in general case for the, the portfolio uh, optimization problem. And if you keep R L fixed and keep increasing the value, so what you have in the other problem is this So, this means R p bar is greater than equal to R l plus z sigma p. So, if you keep increasing the value of, of small z that will depend on the value of, of R l and the alpha value also. So, obviously, as it keeps increasing it will be a basically moving counterclockwise till it is tangent to this point where it exactly leaves. I am not going to draw it here because I will start showing it later on. So, this leaves the surface say for example, where I am hovering my uh, the, the, this electronic uh, pointer. Now, as it leaves it that point would basically give you the best combination of the decision variables based on which you are going to find out the optimum portfolio depending on what the overall utility you have. I will come to the optimum best decisions within few minutes. So, the moment it leaves outside obviously, though would be non feasible region. So, uh, the concept of non feasible feasible region I will come uh, as I said within few minutes. Now, consider you have projects A, B, C, D. Uh, there are four projects and you are investing and the average values of R p and sigma uh, for all these four projects are given. So, considering we have four projects A, B, C, D and we need to rank them using the concept of safety first principle. So, the R p bar value of A, B, C, D are respectively 7, 10, 12 and 15 while the values of the standard deviations are 10, 15, 15 and 105. So, these are the standard deviation obviously, you will square them to find out the variances. So, if R L is given as 7 percent and also consider the returns are normal distributed, you would rank the decisions based on the concept of, of um, safety first principle. So, obviously, you can use a um, optimization problem also. So, I will just give the basic framework for the normal distribution and remember one thing, the problem can also be solved for other distributions also. But the issue is that for other distribution trying to formulate using the standard normal deviate it would not be possible. You have to do some mathematical modeling or try to use simulations in order to basically generate the number of data or, or find out an exact solution. As per safety first principle we have to basically minimize the concept of R p j, j is basically the project is less than equal to R l. So, where 1 i is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 that is the number of projects and j is the number of job activities of financial decisions which you have. So, each would basically have different decision variables I want to basically optimize them. So, obviously, it will be if I use the safety first principle. So, this is R p j minus R p bar j. So, for each project you find how you have the minimum uh, average values standard divisions are given. So, which gets converted into a standard normal deviate based on the fact that you are considering the normal distribution. Again, I am mentioning that normal distribution need not be true always. So, once I have uh, this, so for project A the value of standard devi deviate z is less should be less than equal to minus 0 0.17 for B it is should be less than equal to minus 0 0.24 for C it is less than equal to minus 0 0.35 similarly for finally for D it is less than equal to 0 0.07. So, if I find out uh, the, the values it would technically mean the if you are trying to basically find out the probabilities. So, hence you will uh, rank them considering that how far the values uh, would be uh, on to the right. So, obviously, you will rank them as C is better than B is better than A which is better than D. Now, we will slowly go into the area of optimization and this this class would be at least this part for two or three lectures would be on, only a conceptualization on how the model has been framed. So, consider an example, I will start with the example and then come to the general concept. So, consider um, the company Jabco produces two products in on two machines. So, now mark the word 
there are two machines if we extend it how what it will become it will become clearer as we proceed. A unit of production 1 requires so product 1 for machine 1 requires 2 hours on machine 1 and 1 hour on machine 2. Similarly, for product 2 which is the other product 1 unit requires 1 hour in machine 1 and 3 hours in machine 2. So, obviously, the combinations are there. The revenues I am just very simply considering from product 1 and product 2 is given as 3 and 2 some units. So, the total daily processing time available for each machine now remember this is important is given by 8 hours per day that means, machine 1 also has 8 hours considering the shift. So, obviously, if the 3 shifts were, con con we were continuing, so it would have been 8 into 3 24, if there are 2 shifts it will be 8 into um, 2 16. So, considering only 1 shift you have basically maximum 8 hours uh, per machine per day. And uh, the company wants to optimize what is the word optimization I am going to come to that later it will want to optimize as that is able to to optimize the product combination in order to meet its criteria. Now, let us pause here for one minute. So, when I am saying that word optimization from the point of view of the company given the information which you have you will consider very simply the revenues are given and you want to increase the revenues per unit of production which you are getting from product 1 and product 2. But on the other hand if say for example, the cost were given only the cost in that case the combination would have been such that you, you would definitely like to decrease the overall um, uh, the cost that means, minimize the, the loss in such a way that you are, are able to meet the criteria. Now, remember one thing whenever the problem formulation is done whether you formulate as a maximization one on the minimization one before that one should be aware that what is the decision variables and how you going to optimize it point one. Point number two the constraint should be formulated in such a way that they would give you some practicality in the situation what you are trying to basically formulate. So, I will I'll come to that the practicality with few examples later on. So, here as the revenues are given obviously revenue means some positive thing which is coming into the company's pocket. So, obviously, it will try to increase in that sense the optimization problem would be a maximization one. So, now we have basically would like to formulate the problem as the decision variables and what is the objective. So, the decision variables for the company first is product 1 will denote by either P 1 or X 1. So, here we are taking the quantity of, of, of product produced per day remember here the constraints are given per day it is 8 hours it was given per week we would have basically formulated the problem accordingly. So, I am going to come to that within few seconds. So, when I mention the quantity of product produce per day is x 1 in case if the total duration of time utilization for machine 1 and machine 1 2 was given per week then the quantity of product produced per week would have been considered at x 1. In the other sense say for example, if it was given that the total production is given for 6 months the total utilization of the, the product which you have not the machine say for example, total raw materials which you have in that case I will basically formulate the problem as the case where x 1 the decision variable or x 2 as the decision variable whatever the decision variable is would be considered on that time scale of 6 months. So, hence that formulation um, uh, concept would be easier for us to attempt obviously you can do it per day and then multiply it by the number of um, uh, days of working which is there in the 6 month period, but we will basically ignore that for the time being. So, the quantity of product produced per day for product 1 is x 1, quantity of product produced for day 2 is basically x 2 and the objective the revenue of the of, of the uh, product which is being produced per product per day is 3 and 2 that means, per unit sold you get 3 rupees or 3 dollars through euros whatever it is and for product 2 you get 2 units or 2 dollars whatever it is. Hence, when you want to maximize the revenue would be basically. So, for each product which you sell is 3 you, uh, units you get in your pocket. So, it will be 3 into x 1 for product 1 and 2 into x 2 for product 2 that means, you want to maximize the combination of 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 such that your overall profit is at the highest level. Now, let us come what are the constraints. So, first let me draw the chart. So, this is a very simple problem. So, drawing the chart is only to facilitate a good understanding of the problem. So, for machine 1 product 1 hours required already we have mentioned is 2 product 2 is 1 
from machine 2 product 1 requires 1, product 2 requires 3, availability of each machine is basically 8 hours per day. It can change also, so, but we are considering the simplistic case of 8 hours. Now, if I produce x1 amount of product 1 and x2 amount of product 2, then obviously the total combination of 2 x1 plus x2 would basically be less than equal to 8 because you cannot exceed 8. So, say for example, say for example, if no x1 is being produced, so in that case the maximum value of x2 would be 8. In case no x2 is being produced and only x1 is produ being produced, then in the case the maximum value of x1 being uh, produced would be 4 from the first equation. Similarly, if I go to the second equation which is corresponding to the fact that I am taking machine number 2, in that case it will be x1 plus 3 x2 is less than equal to 8. Now, in that case if I produce no of x2 product on only x1, in that case the total production of x1 would be 8 and if I produce no x1 but only x2, then the number of production would be 8 by 3. Now, here I should pause. Obviously, the question would be asked from your side that when we are trying to basically formulate a problem where the units produced are only integers, how is, how is it possible the number of units produced for x2 in the second constraint when you are considering the constraint to be machine number 2 is 8 by 3. We for the time being will ignore that, solve the problem and then basically later on when you go into integer program, we will check it how it can be solved. And obviously, it would mean as I have said one of the, um, uh, the main assumptions was that the values of x1 and x2 would definitely be greater than 0. So, this is what is given. So, x1, x, obviously you cannot produce negative 1, but in some formulation later on we will find out when we are trying to give the formulation of inventory related problems, it can be done as a, as a, as the variables x1, x2 can be um, negative depending on whether back ordering or some orders which have been spilled over or they have not been delivered, they can be done accordingly. What is back ordering all these things, I will come to that later on. So, here the company's linear programming problem is maximize 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 subject to the constraints. So, now the constraints are technically 2, but added to the fact that you have the third one also which basically means all the decision variables should be greater than equal to 0. It can be 0 also, but it has to be greater than equal to 0. So, maximize uh, z x 3 x 1 plus 2 x 2 subject to that cons constraint. The first machine one is 2 x 1 plus x 2 is less than equal to 8 and the second one is um, uh, x1 plus 3 x2 is uh, less than equal to 8 in both the cases and x1 and x2 greater than 0. So, the properties, now let us see the properties of the LP whether they are they having formulated here. Now, see, let us see proportionality. So, the proportionality of the, the products. So, if I increase or decrease considering the conditions are as it is, the profit would be for x2 per unit production would basically be if as it increases by 1 unit or decreases by 1 unit, the objective function will keep increasing by 2 or decrease by 2. So, there would not be any change in the amount of revenues which you are getting for producing one extra amount of x2 or revenues would not decrease by any value other than 2 for one unit decrease in, in, in decrease of x2. Now, this practicality has to be considered even though in actual situ situation it is not true. To give you an example, say for example, you are selling a product and you want to formulate the problem so that you want to maximize your profit. So, it may be possible that you have to basically sell the products at a discount. So, hence considering that discounting factors would be considered in some other problems for, for the time being we will ignore that, in, ignore that very simply. Number 2, when we consider the constraint so, any increase or decrease of the production units for x1 and x2 would always keep the fact that one unit decrease in, uh, in x2 would obviously mean say, say, for say for, let us consider this. Say for example, in the first equation, let me highlight constraint, consider x2 is uh, 0. So, in that case x1 produced is 4, so there is full utilization in that case. Now, consider that x2 has increased by 1 unit. I am not talking about the, the optimization problem, only the constraint which is highlighted. So, moment x2 increases by 1 unit, in that case what you will have is that the equation would become 2x1 
plus 1 is less than equal to 8 which means 2 x 1 is less than equal to 7. Now, let us pause in that case x 1 would basically be technically be less than equal to 7 by 2 which is 3.5. Now, you will you will ask yourself and I am just just um, uh, inculcating the inquisitiveness in you, you will ask yourself that is it possible to produce 3.5 units of x 1? The answer is no. In that case, what is the maximum number of x 1 which I can produce would definitely be equal to 3 only. So, the 0.5 which is left here for x 1 would mean that some of the utilization and the time frame for machine 1 is left unutilized. On the other hand, consider this. So, this was 1 unit increase in x 2 from 0. Consider x 1 was 0 initially, so x 2 was 8. I am again concentrating on, on equation 1 only. So, in that case, if x 1 is 0, so in that case x 2 is equal to 8. So, every, every the utilization is total, so there is no time left in machine 1. Now, consider that x 1 in increases by 1 unit. So, in that case it becomes 2, 2 into x 1 is 2 plus x 2 is less than equal to 8. So, x 2 becomes less than equal to 6. Now, in that case if you produce 6 units you will see that in respect to the earlier example which I gave also related to constraint 1, there is no amount of time left in machine 1 because the utilization is complete. In the first case when x 1 is x 2 was increasing by 1 unit, then the time left for machine 1 as you want to produce 3 units of x 1 would be 0.5. So, remember that these combinations of, of what is the best combination of x 1 and x 2 would slowly start turning up and they will give you some concept of slack, some concept of, of shadow prices concept. What are these? I will come to that within, within either today or in, in the next class um, uh, later on in the 11th or the 12th class. Now, let us go to the second constraint. Again, let us see x 1 is 0, x 2 is total production which is 8 by 3 that means total production for constraint 2 is not possible. So, there is some amount left in timing for machine 2. So, any increase in say for example, x 1 by 1 unit as x 2 decreases would also be of the same fact that utilization of the machine hours may not be totally complete. Similarly, would be the case when you exchange these values that means x 2 is 0 and x 1 is, is um, 8 in the second constraint, but as you increase start increasing x 2 the amount of, of product which we produced in that machine to, um, to uh, considering the number of hours would also be fraction that means there would be some unutilized time left in machine 2 also. Now, when you consider both the constraint 1 which is shown in yellow color and another one which is shown in, in light orange or um, this uh, brownish orange. In that case, it will be possible that the combination would lead to many of the examples or situations where the number of hours left in machine 1 and machine 2 may not be 0. They would be basically some positive quantity. So, how we are trying to basically formulate the problem would also give us an answer that what is the extra amount time left in this uh, case only machine 1 and machine 2 with respect to time it can be for resources also and how they can be reduced and how the prices can be changed we will consider that in the next class uh, as we proceed. So, with this I will end the 10th lecture and considering that we will we will proceed of trying to give a pictorial diagram first and then going to solution it will be much easier for me to explain the concept of linear programming later on. Thank you very much and have a nice day.